All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to review Cardano. Now, I didn't know like a lot about Cardano, and so I heard some people calling it a scam and some people saying it's the best thing ever. And so like for a long time, I just stayed away from it. Um, but now this video is a deep dive so that people could officially put the rest the scam claims and they could also um, understand why the progress for this uh, project looks the way it does. Um, you know, there are pros and cons to a lot of the decisions that this project has made. Uh, it's an intricate project, and there's a lot of details that are going to be in this particular one, so I expect this video to be um, along. But I put a lot of research into this. Um, I spent a lot of time so that I could officially understand it. And so I'm putting this video out there so that other people can understand it too. Okay, so this is a top-down view of the project. Um, you know, its government is yet to be implemented. Um, but it is going to happen when they do that. Um, I think, uh, I forget, uh, Voltaire is what they're going to call the governance model when that goes out. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's get into the, a broad overview of what it is. So, you know, it, it's not solving any market right now, currently, um, you know, which is most cryptocurrencies. They're speculative on what they will do or serve or be capable of doing. However, what is it going to do in the future is like, what is it being built to do? It's like built, you know, they're like a lot of these projects, they're building the framework, they're building the foundations, the roads, the highways, whatever, of what they want to do in the future. So it's a general purpose infrastructure framework for the internet of blockchains. It's very similar to what Polkadot's mission is. Um, but the difference between this one and Polkadot, you will see uh, when I get into comparing it with between those two. However, this one has a formal verification and proofs with um, a, it's very uh, mathematically approached Haskell programming language. So that what it did is, is it's like, um, you know, it'll use, uh, you'll be able to see what, you know, you'll be able to, to get deterministic logic. You'll have proofs. You'll know whether something, you'll, you'll be able to make claims about the reality of the code, whereas a lot of programming languages don't allow for that. That's what um, formal proofs will allow for. Okay, before I dig too much into everything, you're going to notice numbers on a lot of the resources. And so this is the sources of the information um, I got to. So if, if anyone sees their source here, they can, you, you can see if you see one of these numbers, you'll be able to reference this and see where the sources come from. So um, I'll start digging into it. And like I said, this one is going to be a longer video. So, you know, it, this is only for those who are serious about this project and want to learn more. All right. So I do expect this project to have a future in the blockchain space. It is not a scam. That is my ruling. I was going to say you decide, but I, you know, I realized I do think that it'll perform. And then, then I'll get into the, you know, in the very end of this video, I'll get into a summary of the whole entire thing, but I just want to get into the details of the whole thing and then you'll, you can decide on your own. So I do expect future dem demand for the token to increase in the future. All right. In the, um, it recently had a, a lot of hot excitement. So it's been spent out from that. So I expect future market excitement from price momentum to be more neutral because it's already seen a massive move from that hype. This project, was recently the number three uh, cryptocurrency. And so uh, current awareness is about as high as it could get. This is not some coin that you're gonna get into early. Um, the team Twitter followers, you know, Charles Hoskinskin, he has 134K, you know, uh, the project has 159,000 followers. So for uh, other cryptocurrency projects, this one is not hidden in its social media sense. So it is fully aware, uh, aware of, you know, people are, this is, and, you know, this is when I do these videos, it's comparison to other cryptocurrencies. So you're not really getting in comparison to the other cryptos. You're not getting in early um, before the first marketing campaign. No, like I said, this thing is about as, uh, you know, it's got very popular YouTube channels that are promoting it um, because, you know, I don't know if they're doing deals or whatever, but, you know, it's being it, it's very well promoted. So it, you're not getting in early compared to other cryptocurrency projects. So money needed to move price up to it. Uh, decrease. I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, tokens on sell side to decrease. Um, staking might actually reduce this, but because of these other factors, I don't think it's going to be that much of a help. Okay, so it's got one of the highest market caps that there is, so it's not a low carpet market cap project. Uh, its inflation rate is pretty high. It's 
a functional inflation rate. You know, there is no inflation according to them, but the release of the tokens is functionally inflation for at least 20 years out of roughly an 8% release. You know, which for stakers, this this is a non-relevant if you're a staker. So in reality, you know, I could say this is green if you're a staker. And then, you know, um, so yeah, you know, that would make, actually, this is probably more green than, uh, because if you're involved in the system, you know, um, you, 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 you don't have to experience that inflation. Okay, so um, token distribution, it, it does have a nice fair distribution, which is great. You got to love that about a project. Um, you know, this is irrelevant. Okay, so, okay, as far as one of the reasons that this is red um, is because the price movements recently, um, it's had a 15x in an extremely short amount of time. So that's why that is an in, in far like price movements. I don't, you know, it's not a good idea to invest. It's not a good idea to FOMO. It's not a good idea to buy something after it's 15x in a very short period of time. Okay, so uh, niche currently serving a market now. No, it is not. It's currently pure speculation as are many cryptocurrencies. Okay, so um, regarding not on many exchanges, um, you know, it's it's all over the place. It's, on a, it's easy to acquire. So it's not, you know, it's easy to get. Uh, project is on high volume decks. Not right now. I think it might be on, you know, uh, Binance and stuff, but you know, I haven't checked that, but for the most part, not really. Pull up tokens in the liquidity pool won't be a factor. Okay, uh, project will have a lot of buy and sell activity in the future. It probably will. This project, I think, is going to stick around, so it's going to have a lot of activity on it. You know, which if when there's DEXs available, like Pokedex or even ones on it, on this its own project, that will pull it into liquidity pools. So, you know, that'll be a factor in the future, but right now it isn't. As far as easy to use, the, you know, the data list wallet, um, it, you know, it's easy to use or whatever, but there's no functional uses to it other than transferring tokens. Um, this is irrelevant, fees up earned tokens. Okay, so the token used for services and governance. So use the token for the consensus models for staking, and it will be used for governance in the future. It is not right now, but it will in the future. The Ouroboros proof of stake uh, consensus algorithm. As far as the value of the target market, um, it's interoperability and general purpose trust machine, so, you know, runtime environment. So, you know, it's a trillion dollar market. It's an infrastructure project, um, you know, and they have a unique approach to that. Um, with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where is it? All right, I'll just keep going. All right. Um, as far as governance, uh, yet to be implemented. That's why it's yellow. In the future, this will be green when they actually have it. And I know that they're doing their research and they'll take care of that. But right now, it's not affecting things, so I put it as yellow. Um, you know, it's got th a thousand staking pools with Shelly, so that you know it's somewhat distributed in that sense, and that's part of. Um, that's part of controlling the chain, but it's not, you know, like a vote or anything. Um, but they will have funding proposals and a voting in the future. But right now it's not affecting who, you know, you know, the token is not affecting things in that way. So I'm, I put it as yellow. Okay. So as far as developers being compensated in the future, um, Voltaire, um, is, you know, uh, they have millions of dollars. Yeah, the Voltaire is their governance, and they, they're going to have millions of dollars in their on-chain treasury for development. So that will take care of uh, developers in the future and, pro, you know, that kind of work, uh, development, etc. Developer motivation should be good because of that. You know, he talks about developer tools and solution, focus on sustainability, scalability, and transparency. Their goals, their clear mission statement as to why they're doing all this is to make, you know, a better world, equal at, um, a better equal system for everyone um you know and so you know just sustainability transparency uh scalability uh so you know they have clear goals or like why they're doing this as far as the long-term vision and strategy um you know like i do see that they have open finance for the world that's basically what i see there um all right, so I will get into where I had to put a lot of research in because there's like uh, some YouTubers out there or some people out there who, who don't know or don't, don't trust the development team, you know, or Charles or anything like that. So I'm going to get into what those um, arguments are right now. Okay, so regarding testimonials, um, 
you know, I, I, I started out with this thing thinking like not think having a good opinion of Charles, but after, after I did my research, I actually do have a good opinion of Charles. Like, um, I, he, me and him actually share a world, the worldview in a lot of ways. Um, you know, but one of the reasons I didn't before is because, you know, there's YouTubers who promote him as a scammer, et cetera. And we're going to get into all that stuff. Um, and, you know, I, but the reason why this, you know, well, I'll, I'll keep going, but there, you know, the reason why I thought he was a scammer is because his project hasn't been, de- you know, I haven't seen a large development team or, or and, you know, and th- those kind of things, but we'll actually get into why all these things are the way they are. You know, like I said, this is gonna be a long video because this project has a lot of details to it. Okay. So, um, from Charles, why disagreement with Vitalik and Ethereum? Well, okay. So in the early on, he had a disagreement with Vitalik. You know, he wanted a, a golden handcuff for founders to keep locked into the project. Loyal to the project, eight founders need locked in or run away and create a new thing. So, and that's exactly what happened. You know, you had um, Anthony went to Decentral, Gavin made Polkadot, and Charles made um, Cardano. So he, he wanted people like a structure that would tie them into, you know, making sure that Ethereum um, was a success, that they would be loyal to Ethereum. Now, my, my, my take, a project needs to be structured for proper incentives for this to happen on its own. Um, Charles seems to agree. Um, you know, so he was talking about a slow payout for developers. You know, and I agree that they should have done that. A slow payout, yeah, that, that should have happened. So I agree with him in that sense. They should have not been paid everything up front, and that's what had happened. And so, you know, that's why they all flocked to their new systems. And, you know, a lot of the people who made Ethereum abandoned it. Um, and that's why you see these problems with Ethereum today. Um, yeah, so they got paid up front. He said he didn't take, a, uh, the reward up front and it fails or succeed, uh, doesn't matter to them financially. Um, <clears throat> cause they structured it wrong from the beginning. Um, I wanted a for profit model with BC money when, um, when they, you know, when they made it, when they spin out protocol to, you know, and, and he wanted the thing to be controlled by a VC money. He wanted Ethereum to be controlled by, you know, the VCs and then a spin out a protocol governing foundation to run on it. Now, my take, I actually disagree with that approach. And so I could see why people didn't want to do that. Um, I disagree with this approach. Um, I would have made ETH fail as an experiment of decentralization, decentralization and would have made it nothing of what it is today. In my opinion, you wouldn't have gotten the developer excitement if uh, Ethereum was uh, centralized from the beginning like that. I don't think all these developers that built on Ethereum would have been excited about it. And, you know, like there would have been all this VC money, rich people that would have gotten in early. I don't think that would have looked good either, in my opinion. So I actually do fundamentally disagree with Charles on that approach. I believe ETH is a successful experiment, but it takes time to move on with that, what was learned from that experiment. Yeah, so, you know, I think it was an experiment. I think Ethereum is a, uh, is not a failed experiment. I think it was an excellent experiment, but I think Ethereum is suboptimal. Um, that's why I'm excited about things like Polkadot and even Card- uh, uh, Cardano or whatever. You know, like I'm excited about uh, the next solutions because um, Ethereum is structured suboptimally. Uh, suboptimally. If with Charles would have had his way, we would not have learned anything um, the way we have with Ethereum, in my opinion, because VCs would have been running it instead of enthusiastic developers. So we wouldn't have seen the DeFi to the degree that we have today, in my opinion. Um, you know, but that this is just a fundamental disagreement. Charles is a very smart guy. I actually respect for him. He's very intelligent. Um, as far as his res- statements on Gavin Wood, they seem to have respect for each other, Charles. I don't see Gavin Wood talk much about Charles, but Charles Charles is on all the time, so it's easy to get his opinion on stuff. And Charles says he has respect for Gavin. Okay, so now here's where the, the drama comes in. Dan Laumer um, and uh, Charles worked early on together. And um, remember, Dan, okay, so as far as Dan Laumer goes, he failed to deliver his promises for EOS. Well, I mean, he said he would build the EOS, he did. But EOS has been a very terrible performer. EOS was the worst crypto investment so far that I've made. You know, if I made, I've invested in a lot of things. You know, and I have some failures. Um, but EOS was a terrible performer. And um, Daniel Armour is the one who made EOS. Um, and he often abandons his projects. So his project is 80% down from the all-time high in a bull market. Okay, so that's pretty negative. Um, you know, but I do like EOS. Uh, but at the bottom line is you want to think about you know, do people care about their investors and do they bring their investors return? Charles has done a much better job 
as servicing his investors than Daniel Larimer has. So take that into consideration of Dan Larimer's opinion of Charles. Okay, um, so Charles says he was kicked by Dan. Dan says it wasn't him, it was mutual. Uh, but he was kicked from BitShares in January 2014, according to Charles, that Dan Laumer did it. BitShares claim it was all of them, not just Dan. So there's a big discrepancy there. Charles joins Ethereum, only lasted six months, and then he left um, in, you know, later. Okay, so that is, that makes me feel uncomfortable about, you know, like this drama. I don't like drama. Like, I'm not a drama guy. Um, so I don't like that there's drama behind Charles' past or Dan Larmer's past. You know, I kind of wish I knew more about that, but whatever. Um, and so here we see it wasn't my decision. Um, you know, this is where Daniel Larmer straight up attacks him, distracts Charles. He said, I would warn everyone that Charles is a salesman that tells everyone exactly what they want to hear and has no compulsion with stretching the truth to absurd lengths to telling outright lies. Fortunately for Charles, I will abide by the NDA when it comes to discussing what actually happened to the extent that he says anything other than what he, that he has resigned personal reasons Charles is violating NDA by spreading lies. The distortion field is strong with this one. Um, beware of this shark. So that, you know, that is a, that is not a light attack from Dan on Charles. He will be your friend one day and plan your destruction in secret the next. He treats people as objects to be manipulated for his personal ends. Okay, so this is not drama you want to see with anyone. Okay, um, and so this does make me uncomfortable about Charles, he, or you know, it makes me uncomfortable with Dan. I don't want to see drama in my investments. Okay, so while we're working together, I always wondered why so many people disliked him and were against him. Now I know, fortunately, uh, we survived and moved on. Okay, so that is not good. I don't like that kind of drama. Okay, so evidence of the claim making. Evidence of the uh, Dan Laumer's claim. Okay, I'm you know looking for evidence there, um, and you can see the sources for this um, in my source video. Okay, so um, so the market where uh, Cardano is rev uh, revolutionized, um, he was marketing Cardano as a uh, gambling platform uh, in Japan. Okay, and yeah, it can do gambling. It could do gambling. Um, you know, like, so can any blockchain, but he was saying that's what it was built specifically to do, you know, in Japan. At least uh, that's what it looks to be. Okay, and um, also evidence, this guy, Dushi Izumi, um, was a promoter. Um, Charles claims I disavowed him. I want nothing to do with him. I don't know the man. I don't know the man, okay? And then here's a picture of Charles right next to him, okay? Uh, and this is the scammer. Uh, he was a, you know, he, had, he um, did this... Uh, what is it? He did the no Noah coin scam in 2017, and you know, there, Charles says he doesn't know him, um, and they're sitting right there. So that is not good. I don't like that. That that might be evidence for Dan Laumer's claim that he's lying. Um, you know, and when asked about being marketed as a gambling platform, um, Charles' response was anger. Um, you know, it triggered him. You know, and you could. I don't see that as positive or negative. If I built something and people were saying lies about it, I'd be pissed as well. Um, you know, uh, but I'll also, if I was a liar and I, you know, I would also be pissed, you know? So, um, take that with what you will. I, I, you know, all my only take is this is all drama, you know? And, but, but it's important for investors to think about these things. Uh, you decide. Okay. Charles was, uh, pushed out of Ethereum and now, uh, he seems to hold the grudge against the project, which I can kind of claim, um, you know, and so he's, he jumped off of Cardano. He quit working on Cardano to go to work on Ethereum Classic. And he said, you know, he wanted to go. And even just as I made this video to, you know, he was claiming war against Ethereum. You know, he wants to go to war against Ethereum. You know, it's like he has a big vendetta against Ethereum. So I don't understand why Charles hates Ethereum so much. It seems like he does. Um, you know, whatever he says, you know, he, he seems to want to attack Ethereum. You know, and I, I you know. It, you know, it could be personal or whatever. You know, Charles wanted ETH to be funded by PCs, you know, whatever. Okay, so Charles promoted ETH Classic purely as spite Ethereum. To me, this is also shows, it shows a man full of hate for that project. It shows spite, and that's not healthy. Um, you know, Charles, I mean, but it, over time, he's moved on and on and on. And, you know, he's got the top three cryptocurrency, you know, so he should really, you know, um, or it was, you know, a couple days ago, but he should, you know, move me on and, and get over it, you know, um, and just not care 
because you know and just build what you know what he wants his vision okay all right so now for the good testimonies on um on cardano or on uh charles hodgson okay so alex mashinsky uh, I trust Alex. I like Alex a lot. So um, he says, big announcement. Cardano can't uh, comment yet, but it will be huge. What Cardano is building is special. will allow transactions across different blockchains. Third generation blockchain like Charles has built. First time we have a scalable system that can support everybody on the planet. Charles is ahead in uh, speed cost. Um, you know, we're trying to help get people to switch away from Ethereum. It's expensive. Um, you know, and, and we could do the Ethereum virtual machine with a snap over, um, you know, and they don't have to rewrite anything. So that is great about uh, Cardano. You know, Char Cardano built an Ethereum virtual machine. Charles is talking here about it, the ERC-20 bridge. Uh, Ethereum virtual machine can play with now set up services to accommodate for future needs. Identify solutions, identity for FinCEN, know your client. Prism is all um, know your cliented accounts, uh, sanctioned account. So here's something that, you know, this is something I don't like about Charles's approach. You know, I'm more libertarian. I don't like, but I do, th I do, I'm not, you know, ignorant. I see this being the future. That governments are going to want to put their code into, you know, put their law into these blockchains. And, you know, that's what, um, that's why, uh, uh, Charles is talking about here is putting the code into a layer into the auth authenticated accounts where all of the laws are automatically as you know uh, respected within the Cardano system. And he also says Cardano governance can be ported to all the Cardano assets for that governance component. All right, so um, and further on, uh, you know, uh, 2021, all the legal ways of doing things, DeFi must be fully compliant. Alex, you know, kind of criticizes DeFi and so does Charles because it's it's in its own ecosystem. It's free, libertarian. I personally like that, but they're talking about if you think you're going to get away with that without regulation, you don't, you're, you don't understand anything. I personally do like that. I hope that – I know regulators will come in at some time. But, you know, it, this is a developing system. We'll see how it falls. Okay, so Charles, market fit, trying to establish itself in Africa so it doesn't have to worry about regulatory hits. African government it will be willing to work with you rather than hit you with regulation. So that's one of the reasons Charles is approaching working in Africa. Alex says we have to protect consumers, pre um, prevent uh, via protocol risks. Customers don't know what they're taking. So you got to make sure that unsophisticated uh, investors are protected. Where you know To put an extra layer onto exposure to higher risk. And I agree with Alex on that. Um, I personally like knowing, taking higher risk if I want to, but I got to know what I'm doing. And so it just takes two or three more steps to get there. I, I think it is good to not put something that's high risk right away available to customers. Co uh, safeguard rails for newbies. Okay, so that's what Alex is talking about. Charles goes back on to say, building regulatory components, automatic human algorithmic involvement, Celsius 100% compliant, not all regulations are bad. Charles says, automate as much as regulation as possible. Uh, Governor of Georgia and Ethiopia are our customers. Alex says, um, our, t our token is the ERC20, can be run on more than one chain. Um, we need a killer dap on crypto. Proof of stake is the future, not proof of work. You know, and I agree with this statement, Alex. Uh, I think everybody agrees with this statement. Proof of work is not the future. Um, you don't need things. You just need one. We will work, you know, on yield. You know, uh, yeah, Alex saying that you don't need a, a million dApps. You need just one killer dApp. My opinion is there's going to be – crypto is misunderstood by both of them. And, you know, but it, what am I saying? They're both in the field. But in my opinion, people have a smaller vision of crypto than, you know, a lot of people. Like crypto is a big thing. There's going to be – I think there's going to be a dozen killer apps. I don't think there's going to be one or two. I think there's going to be a lot of killer apps. My, you know, this is bigger than I think even they realize crypto is like the printing press. You know, one or two things, killer apps, I don't think so. I think all of how society functions, it's going to be changed, you know, but that's just my personal take. You know, these two guys are, you know, uh, titans in the field. So, you know, maybe they know, maybe they, maybe crypto will only disrupt one or two things. I disagree completely. Uh, Charles, um, you know, uh, referred uh, Alex to his, his dev team. Alex says, uh, may run synthetic versions with no fees on Cardano. Um, so summary, bridge, uh, ETH, but... That, uh, reduce 1,000 the cost, future needs. Uh, it, you know, this is approaches of Cardano, you know. And they'll, so Cardano is a bridge. It, it'll be 1,000 the cost of Ethereum. It, it's structured to for the future. And uh, synthetic assets on Cardano will be a thing. Um, 
Okay, and so now, you know, this is source five. Uh, ben Gortzel, mathematician, AI expert, a, um, AGI, world expert. So what he says is, um, you know, I'm actually going to skip this because uh, this is a lot of information as well. And I actually have a, a better summary in um, in the other video. So I can actually cut this down short. But here's this video if you want to read it. Um, okay, so... Uh, this is where me and Charles agree, like agree on the future of Bitcoin. Um, once Bitcoin is overtaken, it might collapse. Blocks say ties block size debate. It was proof of this, in my opinion, and it to Charles's opinion as well. Um, it made some of the best people leave the Bitcoin's uh, ecosystem because of a very simple problem, a simple protocol problem. This applies Bitcoin cannot handle critical decisions, and there must exist a structure on chain for governance decisions in the future. And you know, uh, I think we agree on that. Um, to get some of the, the key points from this, let me see if I have to go over any of this. Um, let's put it logs. Yeah, this is pretty much the same stuff. Um, it's just a, a conversation between uh, Ben Gortzel, um, but I, I have a better summary that I put in after the fact. All right, so that, that digs into Charles and the team in the past so that you guys could have a unbiased view on that. Um, and to clear up things, you know, like Chico Crypto was talking a lot of, you know, he's one of my sources for compiling that negative point of view on Cardano. And, you know, um, you know, and so just wanted everyone to be aware of that as well. Okay, so um, now, so regarding, um, you know, like whether they're trustworthy. Okay, so that's what Chico Crypto was talking about. So there's many missed deadlines with this project, um, but I'll actually get into why. And I think that they might actually be justified. So I might even remove that, you know, as a negative thing. I'll put, the, you know, I'll put this as neutral. You know, you could take that for what you will. Card, uh, Charles is rich, so he doesn't have to be here anymore. He, you know, the guy is already rich. So me, that's a favorable thing. You know, he's already made a lot of money. So, he, you know, he doesn't have to be here. He's knowledgeable and intelligent. I think intelligence makes people better. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong about that. But I think so. Um, you know, very intelligent. Says things I believe to be true. You know, so he says he releases valuable information. You know, me and him seem to be agreeing things. Now, he is not humble. Uh, you can take that as a pro or con. You know, I personally take it as a negative. Um, Charles is not does not seem to be a humble guy. Um, you know, very um, stubborn. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, that could be valuable in some context, you know. Uh, and, but there is many missed deadlines. And once again, I can get into that. All right. So that, you know, you could just take that for you. Well, um, all right. So evidence that management is trustworthy. I, I do think that they are. Um, you can see the testimonies. I just went over that. So Dan Laumer, Ben Gortzel, and association with, um, so these are negative things. Dan Laumer's negative testimony and the association with that scammer. Those are negative things. Ben Gortzel and, you know, even Mishinsky. Well, Mishinsky is, you know, isn't that close to him, but, uh, Ben Gortzel is definitely close to this project and, and I trust him. I trust his opinions. Um, so those are good testimonies and that's why ultimately because of Ben Gortzel and, you know, people like that. Um, that's why I do ultimately think that Charles is uh, legitimate. All right, so um, so now to get into Charles, impressive achievements. Well, he's created a billion dollar startup. That's one of my uh, checklist items. Um, so uh, because of this checkered past, though, like I did lower it a little, uh, but his intelligence is high. He's wealthy. That's good. Engagement with community is awesome. The drama with Dan and Ethereum Classic. And, you know, that scammer, that's a negative, and that's what reduced the score a little. And, but, and he's stubborn, you know, which can be a pro or con. And, but the slow delivery, once again, I, I'll get more into why there is slow delivery of this. And um, I could even remove the slow delivery component because I understood more of why that was the case. Um, and it has something to do with the Haskell programming language and proofs, formal proofs. And I actually get why this is moving a little slower, um, which makes sense from that from the approach that they're taking so that's not necessarily a, a negative thing for the developer it's a different strategy and i actually think it will pay out in some ways all right um team has majority control through the token you know uh yeah i mean they're they're doing uh they're maintaining control you know with the hoa hosk or whatever it's called that does the uh development all right um yeah, you can see this is a long video. All right, so high value upgrades. I do expect there to be high value upgrades in the future. Value of services provided to increase. I do expect that to happen. Um, okay, so future marketing plans. I, you know, there's probably going to be marketing. They have a budget for all these things, so I do expect there to be marketing. 
value of services provided, token market. Okay. Um, internal transfer catalyst. So there's a Ethereum bridge and Ethereum virtual machine so that, you know, they could easily port over uh, motivation for people to move into their system. And, you know, the Ethereum fees will, will take care of the motivation right there because Ethereum is so expensive, it's, it's unusable. First mover with uh, ETH bridge and Ethereum virtual environment, and they are a first, first mover for scalable blockchains. If they get out their uh, next upgrade in a reasonable amount of time, they'll be a first mover. So, um, and we'll get into that. Okay, so external transfer catalyst inhibitor. Um, this is the thing that keeps people from leaving your system once they're in it. Um, identity and data on the virtual layer, settlement layer, network relationship with project of this type are sticky, once viable, non-speculative uh, relationships are established. So when this thing moves beyond speculation, I do believe, and you know, with those identities built into the blockchain automatically with your data, I think that will be sticky for the people that use it. Um, because of the drama, you know, I, I just, I, I think drama is a problem that should have been solved, not in the public. And so I took a negative beat for that. Um, but for technology, it is a plus, you know, evidence to build it, solve difficult problems. Yeah, they have good technology. You know, having Ben Gortzwell on your team or working with this project is proof enough. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, so there that is. But I, I did, t you know, so human problems are an important component. And that's why I gave that a, a, a yellow. Current development team is very skilled, you know. But once again, they, they need to work through human problems, you know. All right. Um, now, there isn't a lot of partners, so I didn't put that they have strategic partners and backers. Um, you know, they have, you know, like universities and that kind of stuff, which is great. Um, and, but there's, you know, like, uh, you know, for instance, this Bondly Finance, they were promoting as a partner. But um, Bondly says, uh, you know, when they, everyone is excited about Bondly, but Bondly said, we're actually, we are bringing DeFi to Cardano and we are still building on Polkadot. Okay. Um, you know, so it's not really a partner just building um, DeFi on Cardano helping, you know, so it's take it for what you will, but this guy's like a Polkadot maximalist. I am not a Polkadot not maximalist, but I do love Polkadot. Um, you know, and so, you know, I try to be as neutral as possible. And Singularity Net's definitely working with us. Celsius seems to be working with this as well. So those are good partnerships and this could turn green if, if the Celsius partnership turns out to be really good. And the Singularity one, you know, that one is a really good one as well. Actually, it could be bigger than anything because it's AI. Um, so we'll see how that develops in the future as well. All right, so regarding um, Ben Gortzel, he was saying uh, the Pluto smart contracts, all more scalable, private, um, democratically governed world. Haskell in 1993, prov provability and verifiability of code, very important for AI systems, allows specs extra proving with math. Formal verification is Cardano's approach. So this is actually a very important statement. Um, this is the reason that this project's taking so long is because their approach is like having provability of all the um, stuff that they um, do in the future. Um, you know, like, like the code, like you have math proofs, right? Math proofs, like concepts that prove that something's going to happen before doing it or whatever. So you know what you're going to get. You're going to know the result or whatever. You're going to know the calculations. You're going to know the math. So it creates a reliable uh, model. And so that's what this approach is, like this project, and it's one of the reasons it's moving so slow to getting uh, final results. Regarding uh, Cardano, okay, so this is a competitive part, so comparing it to other competition. So uh, Cardano versus Ethereum 2, on-chain governance, Ethereum has no decision for that yet. Hydra theoretical throughput higher, sharding throughout throughput will be lower. You know, to me, this is a death blow to Ethereum 2, is that they don't have a design for governance. And this is the reason I'm not excited about Ethereum's future because they don't have a, a, a governance decided formally. And that's why I'm excited about Polkadot and Cardano and other projects, you know. Um, okay, so as far as um, projects on... Okay, so this is a comparison between Cardano and Polkadot. So there's 350 projects building on Polkadot. There's a ton of developers um, on Polkadot. And for Cardano, there's no such thing, no such site, no listings for projects building on Cardano, but you know there are some people working with Haskell. Um, and one of the reasons that this is gonna be hard, this is gonna be hard for Cardano into the future is because Haskell's much used by much less people, um, but there are different types of people that will use it, um, and we'll get into that in the future. But for now, they're gonna face this developer problem 
you know, even Ben Gortzel said this, Cardano is going to face a shortage of Haskell developers. It's going to be difficult for them, but there are benefits to Haskell. And we'll, you know, like, like I said, we'll get into that. But I think, I think Polkadot wins on that um, because they have such a, a vibrant uh, developer system. And so they don't, you know, it's one of the reasons I put this as yellow is because there's no vibrant developer community, which you definitely are going to need. If you want to get that killer app, the more, you know, uh, Charles says, you know, you don't need a ton of apps. Actually, that's one of the quotes over here. He says, regarding ADI needing more projects, um, it's not quantity of projects that matter, but it's the quality of projects that matter and what they do for the platforms they are on. You know, and then building the project specifically for this. I actually disagree with Charles. He's not going to be able to tell what is going to be the killer app. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But I think that the, the we can't see into the future. And the best way to get those killer apps is by having more the merrier. And so I think that Polkadot's more likely to get killer apps in the short run. Um, okay, so, but you know, I could be wrong about all this. Everything here is speculative. It is my point of view. Okay, so Charles uh, Cardano, ETH, bridge complete. So, um, and Polkadot ETH bridge is in progress, but I do think that's going to be done pretty soon. People are desperate to get out off Ethereum as soon as possible. People want to leave Ethereum because of the unresolved gas costs. Uh, Cardano claims it will be the first to offer this. Now it hasn't given it yet. It does have the bridge live, but you know, um, we're waiting for the, um, the Gogan, Gogan, um, upgrade. But Cardano wins on this if they deliver, if what they say is true, it happens. Okay, so, and then I, I figured this is a tie um, regarding how they do testing. Um, dot tests in the real world, which is, you know, how we do rockets and all that stuff, you know, in, in financial instruments. Uh, Cardano tests through formal proofs of math and through research papers. Uh, both are unique approaches. I actually think this one will lead to adoption. Um, but, but this one will have use cases into the future, even if it is late to uh, the stage, uh, even if it makes it take longer, because there are some advantages to Haskell. Okay, um, so summary between those two. Um, Dot is a developer community-oriented. Uh, Cardano is physics and math-oriented with proofs. Um, Dot will uh, capture retail and business models, in my opinion. Charles will capture, or Cardano will, will capture industrial controls like AI or machine controls. Um, you know, things that are more physics oriented, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, math based. Um, Cardano will capture abstract concepts like real estate and services, probably even governments. Uh, I would imagine Polkadot will even gather governments and human governments and that kind of thing. Uh, Cardano will capture algorithmic derivatives and financial instruments. So like, you know, like, um, uh, crazy uh, financial instruments will probably exist on Cardano, um, but will have, but they're also exist on Polkadot. Um, and so the way I see it is like Polkadot might have like securities on it, but those securities will jump into Cardano and then Cardano will do all the quick crazy math stuff because it'll have all the um, proofs, you know, like from the Haskell language and then it'll jump back, you know, so ultimately they will likely merge together and taking advantage of their innate designs. So once again, one of the biggest conclusions you can decide is they're both right about, there is no one design to win them all in blockchains. Uh, Cardano is designed more, one has some benefits and Polkadot has some benefits in others. So we need to not be loyal to one project or another. We need to look at both capturing market share and make our decisions on that, but they both will merge together. All right, um, February 16th, February 16th, 12th, this video came out from Charles. You know, he's trying to hype his project. You know, he's talking about Singularity Net. Alex Mashinsky nodding about getting things done. He said 60, 90 days to development firms. Uh, development strategy, acidic, developer, acquire, collaborate, incentivize, deploy. Um, you know, app stores, you know, stuff like that being worked on. University announcement in 60, 90 days. Carnegie Mellon, Software Engineering Institute, you know, established proper standards. Uh, Birdie News, speaking about government partnership in February, major deals, 500 million involved, will be, you know, Cardano will affect Cardano users, African deals, biggest deal in crypto, he says, Celsius, um, you know, expressing interest. So what, one of the reasons I wanted to say all this is to get it on the record so I can come back later and review this video, in, you know, in May or sometime like in after those 90 days are up and see if any of these claims are happen. You know, these claims that he's talking about right here, 69 days, 69 days, all these claims. I want to see if they really happen in 60 to 90 days. Uh, and I'm going to verify it by coming back to this video. And I put it in my calendar to do so. Um, 
Okay, so one thing with the mo roadmap, the reason this turned yellow instead of staying red from all of the, you know, the, from the high pressure from all these new rich people or whatever, um, is because their roadmap might get people excited in the future about price movement. Uh, functionality, smart contracts will come soon. Um, and then after that is scaling and side chains and sharding. And then, you know, they'll go to governance. And this is supposed to be the first half of this year. Um, and here's their map. Uh, so dApps, very important for dApps and for finally getting their, their, you know, getting developers and getting developers excited is getting dApps and, and with Grogan live and all that smart contracts. And he says update by the end of February. So hopefully that's true. Um, you know, Haskell programming, Marlowe, easy to smart contracts. You know, so by the end of March, actually, he, he makes that claim. That all this all these capabilities. Cardano has native tokens, NFTs, nonprofits, etc. Um, non fungibles. I mean, ERC to converter. You know, and then scaling and the governance. So these are things in the future that they'll have to do scaling and governance. Uh, one of the things that's sharding. You know, to explain it because I they do talk about like like everything on one chain, uh, but in Cardano you have a router and it, it'll go onto different like struts, like you have an AI shard, you have a DEX shard, you have a privacy payments shard and an experimental environment shard for testing. You know, so this is uh, a multi-chain, multi-shard approach and that's how they scale. So that's, you know, the technical speak on it. Okay, so finally, finally, wow. Okay, so uh, that was a long one. Um, now we're gonna get into a summary, like the, the final summary, um, which many of you probably wanted to just skip to anyways, if you didn't wanna know everything. All right, so the pros, leader is smart, leader is engaged with community, large enthusiastic community, big advantage with uh, formal verifications of code, mathematical proofs. So this is like just physics and uh, being able to make claims and you know, know security levels and it'll do things like algorithmic trading and that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's the great pros. The cons, there's a lot of drama in the past, speculative asset for over five years. Um, project is old, but not launched any smart contracts yet. Many delays in progress history. Couldn't find much of a developer community. But, you know, the reason for this, as Ben uh, Grotzel said, Haskell will make this a major issue for Cardano in the future. Uh, so, yeah, Cardano is going to face a shortage of developers because of the Haskell language. Formal proofs of Haskell take more time and also take smarter people, people who think in terms of math. Um, so that is a different type of people. And so it does make sense to go to universities and stuff like that to um, to get people, uh, you know, to, to work on this, you know, like physicists and whatever. So I do, I, I do you know, like it is a very different approach uh, than most, pro than all the projects are out there. All right. So um, this is one of the reasons I reached the conclusions I reached. So uh, Cardano has had been riddled with delays. They were supposed to have Shelly done in early, before 2018, but they pushed it back, pushed it back, pushed it back, pushed it back. And so like, and you could see these little bubbles, like each time people got hyped and they lost interest, hype and lost interest, lot hype right before these little marks. So it was kind of like the announcements were a way to pump it. Um, but finally it did get released. Shelly got, you know, released right here after three years after it was supposed to happen. That's not good in my opinion. Um, you know, it's a formal proof language, which probably is for these delays, but you know, that still took way too long in my opinion for something to happen that should have happened. You know, it should have happened sooner. Um, but you know, Time, you know, building something industrial level blockchain is going to take time. So, you, you know, maybe it is a benefit. Um, okay. And so now here we are again, we're, we're going with Grogren and he says it's going to be done soon. So is, are we going to see delays with this one? Um, and that's a very high level of insecurity, you know, and we already saw a 45 X or on the hype of this release. So to me, like I don't, you know, I don't want to invest right now. My decision is to not buy right now. That's my ultimate conclusion because, you know, it's 45 decks in a short amount of time and it looks like it might be one of these again. Um, and, you know, and maybe it'll have a delay. Maybe it'll have a delay. That's the only evidence I have for this project going, you know, forward right now. Um, but I do expect, you know, so I, in the short run, I expect it to be less performant than the other blockchains just because it's had that extreme performance. Um, you know, and, uh, yeah, so I don't expect it to perform as well as other blockchains, and that's one of the reasons that I'm going to hold out on investing on it. But, you know, in the future, I do expect it to have a significant place. Um, but it depends. 
Like I, you know, like I expect there to be more hype right now. I do expect that it'll keep moving up. I think the project maybe has a three or three X or left or a five X or who knows, um, because you know blockchain is still yet to reach the, the height of its peak. But uh, in context of other blockchains, I think you can get better results elsewhere. Um, as far as the second wave, when this thing, so this is the hype from this announcement. But I think the results of this, if it if it goes as they plan and, and it releases, then you're going to get another hype cycle that will be a real one, um, and it'll be based on um, products. It'll be based on the results of getting a live product like Celsius and all that. Um, it'll you know, and I expect that to be like about two years. But if there's delays, it's going to push it out even further. You know, so when this next, and I think it will outperform cryptos when that time arrives. Uh, right now, just because it's had such a huge hype, it's not a good idea to enter, in my opinion. But in the long run, it, it, if it if it has pullbacks or after some time it cools down in the context of other blockchains, then you might want to, you know, it, it, I think it will outperform blockchains, at least in this period uh, from actual released products. All right, guys, that is a review of the Cardano. Oh, one more thing. Yeah, I do think business models will, you know, buy it in the future. You know, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, that is my review of it. Uh, basic summary, Polkadot is more like community. It's going to have tons of people involved with it. This one is more like technical mathematicians, um, you know, like people with proofs. You know, that's just a very basic way of describing these two things. Um, if you get AI systems on this, then of course, you know, if we live in a world of AI, like it won't even matter if you invest in these things, like, because there will be like a post-scarcity world. You know, Charles seems to understand like singularity and all that stuff. So, um, you know, we'll see how that stuff unfolds. But in the meantime, everybody who's looking for a profit can look at this project and say, you know, this one looks to be more like for mathematicians and more like, you know, and uh, hopefully it'll it'll create an environment for programmers that are not Haskell focused. You know, and I think they were even talking about that. So we'll see how that goes, you know, but that's this is, you know, this is hours of research. I hope you guys can come away with a, a, an unbiased view on this. I tried my best to make it as unbiased as possible. Um, I, I came in with this thing with a negative view of Cardano. I've come out of it with a positive view of Charles. Um, and, you know, the, I, I think it has a unique uh, direction. Um, you know, that's what research does. It gets you to think about things as unbiased as possible. At least that's what I tried to deliver. All right, guys, if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. Um, and I hope to deliver highest quality content for you in the future.